Hi YouTube, my name's Sean Connors and welcome back to Outsiders. I'm doing a DMs Tips program today and um, I'm going to be covering off um, a slightly more advanced part of tonality and voice, which we touched on a long time ago, four months ago. I've just put a grey shirt on and I've also brought along a prop, which is this piece of white paper. I'm going to explain in a minute why these are both props. But before we get to that part of this program, which may seem odd because you know we've talked about props before and I'm putting it in a voice program, but this is all about trying to get into character. A few of you have asked me, voices, how do you portray voices? What is it that you do? That's quite a difficult question to answer really, but I'm going to give it my best stab. So I'm going to try my best to get, answer this for you. What I try to do is that you don't do it for every NPC, because to be honest, that's, that's an awful lot of work as a DM. But there are going to be key individual people throughout the course of a session, or some characters that you've been building in the background that you want to bring in. Those are the characters that you use the voices on, and you have to find your own range. So have a think about the way that you speak and your mannerisms, which I'm doing all the time. As you know, I'm very, I use my hands a lot, and adapt and change them. So if you stop moving your hands around, how does that change your voice? If you sit up in a chair and you start lowering the range in your voice, what does that do for you? What if you put more effort in not moving your jaw? How does it make you sound then, other than the fact it sounds wired up? What does it do? And then you can start building on that character. You can start thinking about it. So you can even inject humour into it. So, you know, think of it in terms of someone who is, to be blunt, suffered one too many blows to the head. How would they sound? So, Monty Python, if you want. It doesn't matter, because the whole point of this, it's not about taking the mickey out of disadvantaged people. It's about portraying a character. And perhaps there's something more sinister behind that character who's portraying those mannerisms. Perhaps deep down he's not as silly as he would appear to be. So everything should be for a reason. If you think about your voice and you think about uh, Al, pa Al Pacino, he stuck to cotton wool balls in your mouth, not proposing one minute that you do that, but if you puff out your cheeks and you change the way that your mouth expresses itself, you get a completely different tone to your voice. And it's these things that can make the character, and they're easy to do because they're just mannerisms. So once you get used to your head, your face, and the way that you work, even the way you change your profile, it can massively help give you that range of voices. I've got loads of them. It's just something you slip into as characters. I mean, I use anything I can find that's humorous can often give you a great character. Great examples in British comedy is, for those Americans that don't know, Blackadder. If you can check out any um, Blackadder sketches, there's millions of characters in there. Um, from the real egotistical, obnoxious types to the damn right mad. But they're brilliant. Monty Python, as I'm sure many of you are aware, brilliant characterization. Nick them, steal them, use them. Um, I love, uh, you know, one of my repeating characters I'll use is, is Captain Redbeard Rum. So I will often, uh, you know, ah, uh, well, I sailed the seven seas for 12 years. I tell, oh, you have a woman's hand, my lord. Uh, I'll wager that hand has never set sail in a seven inch rowing pole. Uh, as crazy as it sounds, but you get the point. It doesn't really matter. It's throwing yourself into the character. Yeah, one of the videos we recently covered was 80% confidence. It's because as a DM, you have to let go. Okay, that's a, that's a real key ingredient. You have to trust yourself that what you're doing isn't just completely mad and insane. It's something pretty unique and special. And it's through those uniqueties, it's through those little differences, and voice really does it, that bring together the characters, you know, building that character. Voices massively play a part. Of course, you can't do it with everyone. Now, let's move on slightly here, giving you a double DMs tips program here. For those Call of Cthulhu players out there, um, and anybody that uses any sort of modern games, even maybe vampire-style games, stuff like that, this is a great one. As a DM, put on a, a grey shirt like I've done. Get the prop, the white paper, and do this. Lift the collar up. Stick it in. You know what you've got? You've got a ready-made vicar. Ham it up till the cows come home. Just make sure it sits well. And there you are, you see. You know where I come from? You see, it's very important in the Lord's work that one must follow one's heart. Thou art more dove out than thou follower. So you've immediately got a ready-made prop with a grey shirt and a piece of white paper. And I hope I've done justice to it. Normally I'd prepare it better. But hey, you get the idea. There's a million and one things you can do, both with props with small things. If you can't do voices, think about ways to improve the game through the little movements. 
One piece of white paper and a grey shirt can do this. What could a badge or a hat do for you? What could it do? It could enliven your game to such a degree that it would be amazing. So voice, let's recap it. Voices, it's about finding your range. What is it? How do you make your voice deeper? How do you make it sound loud? How do you make something changes it? So if you want to add a little bit on top of it, what does that sound like? How does it affect it? What is it that it does? What? Well, what do you mean? Whatever it is, if you want to put a voice in. Bubbles, speak to me, Bubbles. Bubbles, tell me the secret of death and life. Bubbles, come back to me, Bubbles. It doesn't matter, does it? Your players will love you for it, yeah? Really find that range in your voice. Enjoy it. Everybody's got it. I don't believe for one minute that nobody can do it. And I think all DMs can really let themselves go a little and create that little bit of magic around the table. You know, if you find yourself throwing yourself into your characters, you can guarantee your players will. And that comment there wasn't directed at me, by the way. But anyway, listen, uh, thanks very much. I've been Sean Connors. This has been Outsiders. Happy gaming until the next time. Take care of yourselves. And may the Lord bless your work. Take care. Bye-bye.